What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanic and today we're looking at a new set of gears that I didn't actually know about until Moonbow showed me to them and that is these ACL gears from the ACL gear mod. But I just wanted to show you guys the old gears and why these new gears really open things up in a way that I didn't realize would be possible in Scrap Mechanic. So just as an example, here's the old gears we used to use. These are now in the mod pack Legacy. Uh, and we used to use them for a fair amount of stuff and they were all right, you know, you had different sizes of gears There were three different sizes actually I'm only showing two of them here um, But there's only two sizes that line up with the ACL gears the ACL gears only have a small and a medium one And the mod pack also had a larger one, but really simply, you know, we could line up our gears and we could just weld them together and if they lined up correctly um, Okay, well that, that Why is that? Wow, okay, well, I didn't... Okay. Alright, well, apparently the small gear is is super broken. I honestly didn't even try it. I don't even know, but here's two large gears. You can see they kind of work together, and uh, if we try and weld the small gear to it, apparently it's just broken. Yeah, it's, it just it just stops it. So, oh, look, it's, it's somehow welded a around. Like, each individual piece somehow welded around the bearing to the wall, even though... They were welded to the barrack. But anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, so you can see these gears are all right, but obviously they have some issues with them. And um, they kind of skip a little bit. You can see you can see it happens right there, how it's got like a little bit of a skip. So they're an older version of the gear, but you know, they kind of worked at the time. And unfortunately, when I tried to make complicated creations with them, they would just get jammed up like you're seeing happen right now. And when you got too many gears all lined up with each other, it just didn't work out well. But these ACL gears here, these are amazing. So like we can do the exact same setup here and we just weld one on and we'll give it power just like that. And then we can just start putting other gears in place. We can go like, you know, put a small one here. Look at that. Perfect. We can go from a small one to another small one and we can of course gear it up. We could go small one here. We could stack a large one on top of this small one. And then we could, you know, bring that over to a small one like this. So now we're actually giving it an increase in gear ratio. And look at this. They're flawless. They're unbelievably clean. And I don't know how it works, but it just works. And look at that. Now we've got a complicated gear system. So it's really, really cool stuff. And as a result of seeing these gears in Moombo's video, I decided to try and make my own transmission. Now I know Moombo made a transmission. He made a three speed transmission and I wanted to try and do a similar thing, except use one constant drive speed to actually go through different ratios and try and sort of achieve different speeds with one similar spinning gear. So that's what this kind of layout is here. We've got one electric engine that drives each of these four small gear teeth. Now they're all the exact same size small gear tooth to start. They're all spinning in the exact same direction and they're all moving at the exact same speed. And the reason why we've got a line here and a line here is these sort of represent the two drive shafts. So we have to make sure that the spacing between each of these gears is the same so that we can just slide this gear along and pick which one of these sets it's aligned to. So here you can see we've got the small gear spinning a large gear, which then is lined up with a small gear, which spins another large gear. And I believe this gives it a one to four reduction. I believe two small rotations is one large rotation just based on the number of teeth. And then if we go one small to large, that's one to two. And then we go a small again to large, that's one to two again. So it becomes one to four. And that means in order to get the yellow here to spin once, we have to spin this small gear four times around completely. And so that gives us a step down ratio. I think that's what it is. I think it's one to four. And then this one here, we go from a one to four to a one to one. So we go from a small gear to a medium gear in the middle and then back to a small gear. And that of course gives us a one to one. And you'll notice these two are spinning in the same direction. So every time you flip gears, you basically reverse the direction of rotation. But you can see this is a three step process. This is a three step process as well. Then of course we move on to the next gear, which is the higher gear. And this is a one to four, but in the opposite direction. So it's a, I guess a four to one. So every time this spins once, this spins four times and it kind of has to use five gears. Now we had to keep the same number of steps, which is, you know, an odd number of steps in order to make sure this spins in the same direction, but we had to step it up to a big gear. So it's a small gear to a small gear, which then goes to a big gear stacked on top, which then goes over to a small gear, stepping it up to a one to two. And then that goes up to another big gear attached on top, which then goes to a small gear. And then that small gear transfers back down onto the drive axle to line up 
with the two of them. So I had to do it this way just because we only have a small gear to drive with and we had to make sure that we had room to put this large gear to step up the ratio. So it had to kind of loop up, go across and then come back down. And then finally, the fourth gear is a reverse and it's actually a one fourth reverse. So you'll notice this has only four gears instead of three or five. It's an even number of gears and it goes small to large and then again, small to small just as a transfer gear and then small back to large. And that gives us a one to four reduction and uh, you know, spins it in the opposite direction. Now, the one thing I will say is these gears are on an angle. They go up on a 45 degree and then back down on a 45 degree. And as a result, you'll notice this one kind of skips sometimes. It's not perfect. It doesn't skip teeth, but it just sort of has like points where it stops rotating smoothly. All these other ones, because the gears are perfectly aligned, they all rotate incredibly smooth and don't have any skips. But this one here kind of behaves like the old gears and it skips a little bit. It still works really well and they still mesh. It's not exactly perfect, but you know what? It's for reverse, so it's not really a big deal. Of course, I decided to take those gears and put them on this setup here. So this is a transmission. It's um, a little bit bulky, but it works on a single drive motor. So we've got this blue drive shaft here. Now I did put an XO meter on it. At some point in time, I want to take this transmission and make it a full automatic that actually, you know, measures the RPM of the drive shaft, but I haven't even tested it yet. So I just want to kind of use this video to test it out, see if it works. And of course, if you guys like this video, let me know in the comments down below and uh, maybe we'll convert this to a full automatic. But that's why this drive shaft kind of angles down and comes back up. It's really just so I could fit that XO meter in case we need to measure RPM. But Really simple, the uh, drive gear is this one right here. This suspension piece here is just to give it extra support. It just clips through this outer gear and uh, you know is running on this free bearing. And of course it compresses as you move the blue piston out and that just gives it an extra support point. So instead of it only having the one bearing, it's supported on two ends. And we've got all of our gears actually completely stacked in this one small area here. So the first set right here is your reverse. You can see we've got the two gears that come up and go back down and that gives us a reverse. Right here, these set here, this is your first gear with a one fourth reduction. This set here is your second gear with a one to one. And then this final set here is your high gear with a four to one increase, I guess it would be called. So if we actually start, you'll see it's in reverse right now. We can press one and that shifts it into forward. It's not exactly realistic to a transmission i know you know real transmissions don't exactly do this but regardless it's it's all right and then of course we shift forward into the next gear and then we shift into the final gear so let's just start it spinning and you'll notice the wheels are moving in reverse and again they're a little bit you know they got that little bit of a jerkiness it is very slow but before this episode's over we're gonna take this put some front wheels on it with some steering and see if this can actually drive just as a manual first and then if it does we'll think about maybe making it automatic i have a feeling the gear ratios are a little bit extreme. We go from one fourth up to four times, so it's a little bit aggressive. But anyway, this is reverse gear. Uh, and then we can shift it into first. You can see it spins at the same speed as reverse, but forward. And then we can shift it into second. Um, and you know, it's spinning faster. Again, one to one ratio. And you can see all the gears are still engaged on the front end, but they're not engaged to the drive gear. So they start spinning you know, faster in reverse, but it just looks really cool. I never thought we'd be able to do this kind of stuff in Scrap Mechanic. And you can see here, we can even do the 90 degree, no problem. And we've got our, our drive axle there. So again, first gear, second gear here, pretty much, you know, one-to-one. -one. And then final gear, uh, you can see it spins a lot faster. It actually puts so much torque on this reverse gear because it's sending a, you know, drive signal backwards through the reverse gears and actually stepping the reverse up that this reverse gear I think is spinning 16 times as fast and uh, actually this forward one here too. So it kind of puts a lot of torque, but you can see it actually gets some decent speed. So let's remove this. We'll take this smart engine assembly, we'll move it over and uh, let's actually hook this up to some steering. All this smart engine does is run the piston. So it's a smart engine so we can control the power and the position of the piston to, you know, a perfect level. And then actually to choose our gears, we only really need to use a memory block. So the piston has a few different settings it needs to be at. So we don't need this number block. We're just going to feed the memory block into the smart engine. So zero would be reverse. And then we can, of course, go one, two, three, etc. for the different gears. Um, so I believe this needs a black number block for the memory. So that sets what address it's at and brown would decrease it so white increases oh no i guess it's not i guess it's not black i guess it's white so one increases and brown decreases pretty simple stuff there and that gives us our memory and then our memory feeds into the smart engine so of course we got to set some values for that um so for gear zero obviously the value is zero 
for gear one, the value is one that it needs to be. So we got this number programmed as one. And then I believe we just have to press the button. There we go. It saves that. Uh, for gear two, the value is... It skips one here, so it goes to three. See, there's... I had to unfortunately put a gap here just because of the gears we needed. And I had no other way to align it. So unfortunately, it doesn't go in even intervals. It's just zero, one, skip space, two, and then three. So um, what are we at now? I don't remember. Let's just... You know what? Let's just reset this. So for gear two, we need to be one, two, three out. So one, two, three. And we can save that for gear two. And then for gear three, we need to be four out. There we go. We save that. So now the memory block should actually shift automatically. All right. So gear zero lined up. No problem. Gear one, it goes automatically and engages that next drive. Gear two, it goes to three and engages that next drive. And gear three, look at that, it engages the final drive. Perfect. So there we go. So that's all the settings for the gear. Uh, and then we have to actually hook this up to a seat and put a drive engine on the drive axle. So let's just extend this forward. We're not going to do anything, you know, too fancy or too crazy. We're just going to put, you know, a seat right up at the front. The seat's going to have to connect to the drive axle through a motor. I think I want to do that with a smart engine just so we have a bit more control. Um, but let's just put some wheels on this thing. So let's just bring this out. And actually, we need to go up one all right so let's just do some really basic steering on this thing um i think that's lined up good enough and we'll put the same size wheels on it those were i believe seven by two it needs a fair amount of ground clearance you can kind of see the gear teeth stick out a little bit on the bottom we could of course have the transmission mounted up higher in the vehicle and then bring it down but either way i just wanted to actually try this out as a proof of concept i have a feeling that first gear with the extreme like one to four reduction isn't going to have a problem same with reverse i don't even think the second gear like one to one is going to have a problem but i think the issue is going to come in when you do the fourth gear because it's or the third gear i guess the fourth one in the series but it's got a one to four so every one rotation of the drive axle gives you four on the output wheel and i don't think it's going to be able to successfully maintain that. So either way, we'll find out. And I mean, it's a really, really cool thing that these gears work. It gives me a lot of ideas to go back and fix some old projects. Like we had worked on a differential system a long time ago, but it was super laggy. And I'm wondering if these gears, like they don't seem to cause any lag. So I'm very curious if we could make a very complex drive system using these gears again and if they would work better i also remember i had tried making a piston powered propeller plane by gearing up the piston engine and the one i made we had to make this ridiculous piston engine that had these huge propeller blades but i feel like now we could actually just gear it up properly and go to a one to four and you know if we increase this you can see like it can handle like that handles a fair amount of speed i feel like we could make a propeller mounted on the front of a gear system but of course let me know what you guys think in the comments down below i just found out about these gears the other day so i'm super excited to play around with them and you know see what happens but here we go so one shifts up and uh two shifts down there we go so one two three one two three we don't really have a lock on that so if you accidentally overshift, that's your own problem but it'll work and then we need a smart engine so we're just gonna have a smart engine multiplied by a number and that should give us the speed that we're going and we'll of course hook it into a ws converter um and again we're gonna use a smart engine just because then we can truly you know customize the power if we wanted to uh it's very easy with a smart engine to just make your power ridiculous in case we need more power to spin the drive shaft so smart engine hooks into that uh and then of course we're controlling the speed of the smart engine which is white so we're going to paint this white and multiply and we're going to multiply it by a WS converter here. So WS, which gives us a 1 or a negative 1, multiplied by the constant speed that we want this to set to. Um, and for now, I guess we'll start at like 100 and see 100 RPM, I think is what it is. Something like that. So here we go. So now if we press W, okay, it's, it's the wrong direction. So there we go. Reverse. All right. So now it's working. So it's spinning at 100. Oh, wait, no, we're in reverse in first gear. I'm, I'm dumb. That means that was actually the right direction. Yeah, reverse. So we press one, we shift. And now we're going forward. It's incredibly slow. Two. Okay, that's good. And what about the final one? You know what? We can actually... See, it kind of skips on that final gear. It's so tough. It pushes the bearing out of alignment because that final gear is just such a crazy ratio. The first gears are so incredibly slow, and then the final gear is just, it's skipping. You can see, this is why I had to put the suspension on it to try and prevent it from skipping. But even then, it still has so much power that it just, it like pushes the teeth 
out, which is sort of a problem. I'm not exactly sure how to fix that. Um, all right, well, let's let's change this a little bit. 100 is too slow. Let's go up to 1,000 and see what happens. So let's go 1,000. And, of course, this will give us, you know, that's 1 to 4, which is insane to think about. So that's 1 fourth the speed. Uh, let's go, let's go reverse. Here we go. There we go, reverse. I love the gears, though. I just love watching them work. But I think, honestly, I feel like this product needs to be redone, but with gear reductions of, like, 1 to 2. So it's got to go, like, 1 half, 1, and then 2 to 1, I think. Because that's 1 fourth. And I think it's skipping now. Uh, just because we're spinning. Yeah, look, it's spinning so fast. Sometimes it just skips. All right, and then one to one. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it just, it just, it's too much power. It's got so much power, it doesn't actually spin the gear. It just pushes. What the heck is going on there? Maybe it's the suspension causing the issue, giving us a weird suspension glitch thing happening. Okay, you know what? Let's just, let's just save this and then remove the suspension. Well, if you remove the suspension, then it definitely gets rid of the suspension glitch issue. But then, of course, the gear tooth it kind of skips a lot more because that blue drive axle gets forced out of the gear and doesn't really align properly but either way let me know what you guys think in the comments down below i think this design could be tweaked obviously this is my first attempt at building a transmission and uh i just thought it was pretty awesome to have the different speeds i think going from the ratios i went to was a little aggressive i probably should make lesser ratios i mean like look if we go in first gear look at how slow that is this is like grinding you know this is like tractor speed i'm sure it has a lot of torque but it's really, really slow. And then reverse, you know, that's the same speed, but no big deal. And then as soon as we jump, like, the jump from first to second is insane. And then we're, and then we can't move. And then second to third, it just skips. It, see, it can't even get the power of the gear tooth. That's why it needed that suspension. You can see the end gear there is just kind of twitching out. And uh, with the suspension, it helped keep it aligned. But of course, it actually was just causing that crazy suspension glitch to happen. So this transmission... I'm glad I didn't try to make it automatic right away because it, I don't think it would have actually worked. But it definitely taught me a lot. I need to make a better drive alignment system. I don't exactly know how to do that. But like I said, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I do want to go back and remake some of the old drive mechanisms I had made before with the other gears. Especially I want to try and make like piston powered planes again. And see if we can use these gears properly to gear stuff up. Maybe even try and see if we can get a piston powered helicopter going. But again... I mean, I don't know if any of that's going to work because these gears have to actually mesh properly at high speeds. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And while you're at it, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see y'all next time.